Thanks, my grandkids, for that wonderful, wonderful number. Praise the Lord for that. Our topic today, Perfect Fellowship Day by Day Part 2. Perfect Fellowship Day by Day Part 2. In our last message, we pointed to the fact that time is divided into three periods, past, present, future. The past and the future are the periods that concern some most. The past, because of cutie feeling, thing that played those of conscious with wrong committed, large or small. And the future, because of lack of faith and our dullness to realize that it's belong to God and He revealed only what he desire us to know. He show, however, that the past is redeemable in Jesus. Quote, Who Jesus was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Roman chapter 4 verse 25 declare, Who Jesus was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Romans chapter 4 verse 25. Again, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sin that are past, through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believe in Jesus. Romans chapter 3 Verse 23 to 26. His message at the Pentecost. Him, Jesus, had God exalted with his right hand to be prince and a savior, for to, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witness of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost whom God had given to them that obey him. Acts chapter 5, verse 31 and 32. Folks, to the saints of the conscience, the problem is only in the present. And the message of Jesus is, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what he shall eat or what he shall drink nor yet for your body what he shall put on, is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Behold the fowl of the air, 
for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor get it into palms, yet your heavenly Father feed them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking forth can add one cubit unto his statues? And why take he forth for a raiment? Consider the lily of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even someone in all his glory was not arrayed like one of this. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall be not much more close to you, O ye have little faith. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or where we hold shall be clothed? For all these things to the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father know that he have need of all these things. But seek he first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the thing of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Matthew chapter 6 verse 25, 34. Listen, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. It is no light thing to conquer the evil of today. And it is not the evil among us that is most problematic. Of course, we are by no means ignoring the potential of four battles of the evil angel that are at war with the saint as we told. For we wrestle not against the flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against the ruler of the darkness of this world, against the spiritual weakness in his high place. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. Remember, this may not be subdued from without, but from within the saints, since their chief strategy of conquest are temptation. Here in line the problem of the evil that is sufficient for today. Because is the man that endured temptation, for when he tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord had promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then, when lust had conceived, it spring forth sin, and sin, which is finished, bring forth death. James chapter 1 verse 12 to 15. Beloved, we must not hurry here. Notice that penetration is placed on the head of that man who endure the dark of Satan. The text does not say the man who left at the stingy dark of Satan's poison arrow, as some say in their unholy ego, he feel the sweat under it. They endure it until the pain pass away. Let it be realized that it is no light thing to pay a temptation, and every saint of God at some time in the conflict has wept because he failed to endure. Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, is the only one who entered the conflict with the power of hell and endure all that Satan could place upon him and fail not. He was in all point tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Hebrew chapter 4 verse 15. 
But we are not left in darkness as to our Lord's attitude on the distinguishing dark we read. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered a prayer and supplication with a strong cry and tears unto him, God that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he of fear. Though he were the son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the offer of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Call of God on a high priest of the, the order of Melchizedek. Hebrew chapter 5 verse 7 to 10. Indeed, beloved, he prayed with a strong cry and tears for fear of eternal death in the endurance of obedience. James explored the ramification of temptation and gave Satan no place whatever. He declared that the root of temptation is not to be found in Satan, but in my carnal nature the original sins of Adam's heritage. In other words, James is saying that if all the hosts of hell were extinct today, my temptation would be in no wise debate. No man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed it. James chapter 1 verse 13 and 14. Beloved, we must be thoughtful here. Although the world is made up of the lust of the flesh, the eyes, and the bride of life. The problem is not with the world, but with the lust that is in me for the world. James treats the subject more fully. He declared that it is the enticement of the lust that produces conception, and the conception of the lust produces sin, and the conception of sin brings death. James chapter 1, verse 15 and 16. Glory to God. Remember, If I endure the deep arrow of my lust, which are not sin unless I cherish them to conception, I shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord had promised to them that love him. But we must get down to the root of the lust proper, which it seems to be the real evil of today. It has to do with the control of my senses, which are the only avenue to my soul or mind, and the spiritual level for victory is staged by Paul. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritual-minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is amity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot bless God, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of the Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. But it, this, but this spirit that dwell in you. Therefore, brethren, 
We may be told not to the flesh to live after the flesh, but for if he live after the flesh, he shall die. But if he through the Spirit to mortify the deeds of the body, he shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the Son of God. Glory to God. Romans chapter 8, verse 5 to 14. Again, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapon of our welfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of the strong hole, cutting down imagination and every high thing that has hauled itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing unto captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 and 5. Indeed, beloved, the arrow of my lust are in my thoughts. Imagination which act activate my sensory nerves and the weapon of the conquest are the same that take care of the barrel of the evil angel. They are effective within and without. Listen what the Bible said. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mighty. Put on the whole arm of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against the flesh and the blood, but against the principalities, against powers, against the ruler of the darkness of the world, against the spiritual weakness in the high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arms of God, that he may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your lean girt about the tr with the truth, and having on the breastplate of the righteousness, and your feet swart with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Or above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith he shall be able to quench all the fierce dark of the wicked, and take the homelet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18. Brothers, the battle of spiritual survival is my today. This is a must for today. Since death may give no warning, and my victory today means my eternal life in death today. Well, Solomon declared, for to him that is joined to all the living there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. The living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they made any more a reward for the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love, their hatred, their enemy is now perished. Neither have they any more portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 4 to 6. The lesson of the creation stands out in bold focus on a divine principle of an each day victoria. God will create our world by the divine fiat. God could have created our world by divine fiat, but that would have ruined the lesson of the day of today's spiritual ideology. He took six days to accomplish his work by working one day at a time. 
ending in the, the Sabbath rest on the seventh day. Genesis chapter 1, verse 2 and 1 to 3. And in our Lord's ministry, he emphasized the same thought. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for any sake, the same shall save it. Luke chapter 9 verse 23 and 24. Beloved, may God help us to make the day-by-day living a possibility not only for time, but for the days of eternity. May God, may the Lord richly bless you until I come your way again.